Good afternoon, folks. Spectacular eruption of a filament caught in the middle of an active region of sunspots. An X-ray explosion the size of Neptune ejecting billions of tons of plasma into space and followed by a long duration lasting element to the solar flares, the coronal arcades, the arching magnetic fields, resurge the plasma population in the solar atmosphere. A coronal mass ejection is expanding into interplanetary space at this time, directly aimed at Venus, and the culprit is that long duration, the thicker flare spike here on GOES X-ray flux charts. It produced a radio blackout that lasted as long as the flare did, and shortly after the flare, it had resurged the high-energy protons coming along the interplanetary magnetic fields connecting Earth and Sun. We are back in a low-level polar radiation storm for the third time in a week. The coronal mass ejection, or CME, was widespread, sending a ripple through the atmosphere, a solar tsunami of plasma. This is your first telltale sign of a wide, rather than tight, eruption. On SOHO, there's no question this blast was sizable, considerably bigger than the last several CMEs we have seen. Here's why. The spikes here are the two previous X-class and near X-class flares. And here's the latest chart again, with a thicker eruption, producing the most fantastic CME. For the second time this cycle, we have seen the area under the curve matter more. The long duration flare of lower magnitude outblasts the higher energy flare of impulsive shorter duration. When analyzing the direction of the CME, Obviously, the ejection is heading mostly to the right from Earth's view, ahead of Earth's orbit, as would be expected from the position of the sunspots. But you should notice the portion of the CME that can be seen north, south, and even to the left side of the central blocking disk. That is the width of the CME. NASA's Enlil spiral has already updated to show the bulk shockwave missing Earth, but the chances for a glancing blow are solid as satellites suggest. Some notes on the Enlil spiral here, starting on the left with the circle. Hopefully you can tell the sun is in the middle and that wave that shoots out is the CME. Those black and white hashed lines are the magnetic connections back to the sun. You can see Earths get dinged by the CME, which we discussed as the cause of the proton storm at the polar region. The middle panel is the density expected in the Earth vertical plane, as viewed from the side. The light green and yellow color to the Earth-aligned portion of the wave is the glancing blow potential with the bulk missing Earth, and this is likely correct in this model. Lastly, on the right, let me go ahead and tilt that sideways. That's Earth in yellow and the stereo satellites to the side, and this shows a density at 1 AU, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And the splash effect you see is the CME hitting 1 AU. Again, the shock wave isn't aimed at Earth, but the outer edge may give us a little clip late on April 4th, and it should be weak enough that I'd forecast the only chance for geomagnetic storm conditions would be a geoeffective coupling and timing with the arrival of the coronal hole stream enhanced solar wind, which is expected to arrive about a day beforehand, maybe less, on April 3rd at night or early on the 4th. Or, of course, we could get more eruptions heading our way. There is a bright active region of sunspots growing behind the coronal hole, and between those two, a thin, dark, snake-like plasma filament that could also erupt. Education, eye candy, and no fear. My kind of space weather. If you missed the morning show, there's some outstanding science articles today, and I'll see you in the morning for tomorrow's daily update. Be safe, everyone.